Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, October 8th, and I am back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you've all been well, and you've been stitching, and making, and creating all of the things. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast where I talk about my cross stitching and my quilting. However, if quilting is not something that you are interested in seeing or hearing about, I show that a little bit later on in my video and I let you know in plenty of time that they'll be making their appearance so that that way you can go on to the next floss tube video. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So how have you guys all been? Hope you've had a great two weeks since we last sat down to chit chat. This video is going to be a little bit different. I'm gonna throw a lot of finishes at you. Um, I decided, so the first year that I did floss tube, um, I did a home tour and I got a lot of questions about the cross stitching and the quilting that I had shared. But by the time I had put that video out, it was later in October and I had put a lot of the stuff away by the time my next video had come out. And then last year I decided not to do a home tour, but instead just take a bunch of pictures and insert them at the end of one of the videos. And the same thing happened. I got a lot of questions about the finishes that I had showed. And by the time my next video rolled around, it was November. So I decided in this video, I am going to half all of my cross stitch finishes and my quilting finishes and I'm going to show that half in this video and then in my next video I will show the second half of all of my finishing. So this video is going to have a lot of finishes in it. I also have the finishes I did over the past two weeks so I'm just going to like I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, a, some of the stuff I don't remember the names and I tried to I really tried to figure out um, what you know some of the cross stitching pieces were called or even some of the quilting. Mainly the quilting because some of the quilts that I'm going to show are a little bit older and I just don't remember the names. I was I didn't keep track of that kind of stuff back then and, and so I just I don't remember. If I am able to find the name between now and when I am editing the video, I will of course scroll it or I'll put the information down below. I do put all of the information down below, everything that I show in the video. So that way, if you have any questions, that's just a great place to go to look. And I do forget sometimes uh, because by the time I film the video and then edit it, which it ends up being very late in the day, sometimes I forget. So, but I do try my best to make sure that any information is, is down in the description box down below. So that being said, um, the way I'm going to do my video is I did get some happy mail um, and I do have progress and I do have the giveaway winners from my last video as well as a giveaway for this video. So I'm just going to kind of keep everything going at kind of a quicker pace than I normally would. Um, just because there's a whole lot that I want to show you and I don't want this video to go over an hour because then it is a pain to get it uploaded to YouTube. <laughs> um, my last video I actually got it all the way uploaded to YouTube and realized I forgot to insert the giveaway portion of the video so I had to go back and I had to insert it and fix the whole ending and anyway so right now it is about 11 o'clock in the morning. Brian has went off grocery shopping um, I have to keep my phone, normally I put it on do not disturb because I find that the video quality is a little bit better when I do that, but Allison is supposed to come home today from college and I haven't heard from her yet this morning. Um, so I am kind of watching uh, for when she does, you know, let me know when she's coming home. <laughs> and then of course, Ethan is home today because uh, it was a teacher in service day. I did get a lot of questions about Ghoul on the Stool. Um, Ghoul on the Stool had fun at school. Um, he, so Ethan got to school and in his second period class, he opened it up, there was Ghoul on the Stool. Um, he, uh, when he came home from school, he told me it was very well played. <laughs> but he shoved him down into the bottom of his backpack and had to carry him around all day. So he was always very careful that he remained in the bottom of the backpack. Um, now, in the morning, right before he leaves for school, <laughs> he always opens up his backpack and checks to make sure that I haven't stuck the ghoul in there. Um, but he was a good sport about it. He had a good laugh. The ghoul, 
I would show him, but I've hid him and Ethan hasn't found him yet. And he is actually just right over yonder tucked behind something, but I don't want to disturb him because it's a really good hiding. It's like out in the open, but yet it's not. So he hasn't found it yet. So maybe in my next video, I'll be able to show him, but I have posted on Instagram and my Instagram stories, um, a couple of places where he ended up when I hit him or when Ethan hit him and then I found him, but, um, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, so Ethan, uh, he always checks his backpack now to make sure that the ghoul doesn't go to school with him. But what he doesn't check is some of the other pockets. So, you know, you just never know. <laughs> I had to pause really quick because I saw there was a message from Allison. So it looks like she's probably going to stay at school and come home tomorrow, which is good. Uh, it's going a lot better for her now. The first week was a little bit rough. Um, but I think that she started to make friends. A lot of the people that live in her dorm are um, the same age as her, so they and they all have kind of the same interests and things like that. So that's really, really good. So I'm a little sad I do miss her, but I'm glad that she is having a good time and good enough that she feels comfortable just staying and maybe coming home tomorrow. Basically, she just wants to come home, so I'll do her laundry. <laughs> Otherwise, I think she would probably just stay, which is good. It's sad, but good. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some happy mail. Um, over the past two weeks, I received a package from the Fat Quarter Shop of items that are new and available now on their website. And I will put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop's website down below. Uh, the first thing that they sent me is a cross stitch chart by Lori Holt of BMI Bonnet called Quilty Barn. Super cute. And the needle minder that uh, you can also get. Also very super cute, I love it. <laughs> and then some Be In My Bonnet stitch cards. This is set J. And these remind me of the quilt blocks that you can find in one of her quilt books. I can't, is it spelling B I think? And then Blue Smoke, which is a quilt by It's So Emma. Very cute. This one would be awesome as a winter quilt. Very, very awesome. So thank you so much to the Fat Quarter Shop. And again, I will put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop's website down below. And some of these items I will be giving away a little bit later on in the video. So over the past two weeks, I have gotten a lot of wonderful happy mail. And I just have to say, you guys are so absolutely kind and generous. And I, I honestly hope that someday I am able to pay it forward. And just thank you so much. You guys are just absolutely the sweetest. Um, I did also get some quilty happy mail, which I will show in the quilting segment of the video. Um, Patty, she sent me three charts. One chart she sent for me to keep and two she sent for me to give away. So the two I will be giving away a little bit later on in the video. The chart that she sent for me to keep is Jardin Privé ABC Halloween. And I really love this one. I actually had been looking at it right before the mail came. And if you followed, I think it was last year or maybe the year before I did, um, Jardin Privé had the, the Halloween, it was, it says Halloween and then it's got like little motifs and then at the top it has a skeleton and I said it, it reminded me of Burt Reynolds. Um, and I have it to show today. I don't remember, I, I don't remember if the name was Halloween. I don't remember, but this um, is the same company that designed it, designed this. And uh, I really, I love Jardin Privé. They just do beautiful, beautiful charts. Um, so I'm excited to maybe stitch that next year. Uh, the One of the charts that she sent for me to give away is by Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. Uh, it's called Peace Winter at Pansy Patch Manor. And I had never heard of this designer before, but their charts are super cute. So cute. And then this was part of a stitch quarterly by the Fat Quarter Shop. And it's called Homegrown Cross Stitch Pattern. So cute. It'd be perfect for autumn. So thank you so much, Patty. It was so generous of you to send those my way. And then uh, I was contacted by Judy and Judy is also working on Turkey Hollow. And I, it's her and her group of friends are working on Turkey Hollow together. And she sent me this adorable card. 
and she told me that uh, I needed to have because they all they have the same needle minder and she told me that she wanted to send me the same needle minder as well since we're all working on it together and here is the needle minder so cute I had him on my stitching because uh, I worked on Turkey Hollow the past not last night but the two nights previous and so I had him on my work so sweet the needle minder is from Kim's creative needle minders and she does have an Etsy shop so I will link her Etsy shop down below but thank you so much Judy and then I was contacted by Artie who is the vintage stitcher here on floss tube and in my last video, I totally had cut it out, but she was a new floss tuber that I had found. I had actually found her videos before she reached out to me. Um, I love her video. She is so sweet and so kind, and I will put a link to her videos down below. But she contacted me and said that she had some floss drops that she wanted to send me. Um, on Instagram, I'm not sure if it went over into Facebook, but uh, there was a big... Um, floss drop swap. I didn't participate in it, but I have been, you know, watching um, different floss tubers. They've swapped out for, with people. And then I've seen on Instagram, you know, when stitchers will get the floss drops from various people, they'll post about it. Um, but I, I didn't participate in it. Uh, it looked like it was a lot of fun, but Artie had contacted me and she said she wanted to send me some of her floss drops. Uh, she sent me this card. I love this card so much. It's from Kitten Stitcher. And these were her floss drops cards. And so um, I think when you get them, you're supposed to punch a hole like up here and down here. And I love it. I love the vintage picture that she picked out. And this is what the back says. And I'm sorry, it looks like, I'm hoping it's not gonna get too blown out, but so sweet of her. And then she also sent me some seasonal ones. So I love flash drops. I use them all the time. Uh, so thank you so much, Artie. And again, I will put a link to Artie's channel down below. I'm terrible when it comes, you know, I, I will watch new floss tubers and I will write down all the information so I can mention it in my video. And then I always forget. And sometimes I feel like I need to have like a board that just kind of scrolls up and tells me, okay, to say this, say this, say this. <laughs> Cause I am just absolutely terrible about it. And I, I hate that I, I, I just hate that I forget. It drives me insane because there are so many great floss tubers. They mention me and I'm like, I just, oh, I just forget constantly. It just drives me up a wall. You would think that after doing these videos for almost three years, I would, it would just be natural to do that. I think I'm going to strive to be much better at mentioning, not forgetting and mentioning floss tubers in my video next year. I think that's going to be one of my new year's, my new year's resolution. <laughs> And then I received a wonderful package from Renee. She had won one of my previous giveaways and so she sent me this card. And she sent me all of these wonderful little goodies. Uh, the first thing that she sent me is some seam binding. It's some vintage seam binding. And it is going to be absolutely perfect when I change the trench bowl back into so in January, because I don't have a lot of winter stuff, I'm gonna change it back and it'll become like a sewing, well, like it was before um, I changed everything into Halloween. I've, it's kind of got like a sewing theme to it or a stitching theme. And so this is going to be perfect in the trench bowl. Uh, she also sent me all of these little doodads. So there are some antique-ish looking safety pins. There's this little charm that says joy. Yes, it says Joy. And then these vintage clips. So wonderful. I love all those little things because I do use them when I'm finishing. And then even in my cross stitch finishing, I always like to put just a little something. So it is going to be perfect. Thank you, thank you. And then there is this sweet little uh, card that she sent. So cute. And then the coolest thing, which if I, if I had been like really clever, I would have plugged it in, but she sent me this little tin 
It's very prim and so wonderful. And you plug it in and I need to find the perfect spot around the house. Um, but I love it because I do in the evenings, I have battery operated prim candles that turn on and they're in different areas of the house. And so this is perfect. I absolutely love prim decor. And I'm so excited to have this. It's so sweet of her to send it to me. And every time I turn it on, I'm gonna think of you, Renee. And then she also sent me this uh, Rusty Krusty candle, which I love because I decorate and prim. So sweet, so thank you so very much. It was so sweet and so generous. And I, I'm just absolutely, overwhelmed with your kindness. I I definitely don't expect to, you know, I don't really think I expect to receive happy mail, um, but it, it's just so, it's so kind and so generous of you all. And thank you so very much. And again, I hope someday I'm able to pay it forward. All right, had to pause, clean everything up. And now I'm gonna talk about what I've been working on over the past two weeks. And while I was cleaning up, I could smell smoke so I'm like, uh-oh. And I went out and I looked out the back window because I can tell that it's all smoky out there now. And my dad is burning the big giant pile of debris um, that's been waiting to be burned forever. And we couldn't burn anything because we were under a burn ban. And it looks like it's massive. And of course the wind's blowing like crazy and the smoke's coming this way. And yes, at first I thought something was on fire. <laughs> I mean, something is on fire, but I was like, Something really big is on fire and it's just the big giant pile of debris. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what I have been working on over the past two weeks. So last night I started working on Christmas Rose by Blackbird Design. So I started it last night and it'll be in my rotation for the next four, well this evening and then the three following. Um, I do, I did change up my rotation. I got a lot of people asking about it. Um, the first question I got was, does everybody do a stitch rotation? No, I would say probably half of the cross stitchers do. The other half are monogamous. Um, I think you just do whatever makes you happy because this is just a fun hobby and you just need to do what works for you. The other question I got was when did I, how did I know when to start? Um, I keep track of all my stitching in a calendar and I had filled it all out and then I got to, um, well I try to fill out two, two and a half, three weeks ahead of time. So I just, I got to a point where it was time to fill it out again and I just went ahead and I started that day and I just did five days on like Christmas rose. Usually what breaks up in between the two five days is Turkey Hollow. I work on it for two days. So like this one, I started working on it last night. So last night was Thursday. So I'm gonna work on Christmas Rose from Thursday till Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday is Turkey Hollow. And then Thursday through Monday will be something else. Um, I say just kind of do whatever works for you. Try different things out if you do want a rotation. Um, a lot of it is because there's just so much I want to work on and I just want to work on it all right now. And I only have two hands, so I can only work on, you know, I can only work on things slowly. Uh, but having a rotation kind of helps me, it helps keep me motivated for everything. And I really enjoy it. And I have gotten quite a bit of progress over the past two weeks on the stuff that I've worked on, um, I found that it works better than what I was doing uh, before because what would happen is I would start working on something um, that first day or sort of getting reacquainted with the project. And then by the next day and the day after you're like getting in the stride of stitching it and then I would have to put it away pull out something else, get reacquainted for a day. And so this way I get reacquainted the first day and then I have four days to stitch on it. And I really like it, it works really well for me. Um, so Christmas Rose by Blackbird Designs. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count vintage, heritage? I think that's what it is. I think it's vintage, vin maybe it's vintage homespun. 
36 count vintage homespun. I'm stitching it with the called for threads one over two. And if I've got the uh, linen wrong, it'll flash down below. But I love it. It turned out, I mean, it's, I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to get this finished and up on my wall this year. So when I picked it up yesterday, I actually worked on it a little bit more than I probably would have normally. Um, I, I hurt my knee doing something and I was supposed to go out and do long arm quilting for clients because I'm almost all the way caught up with the ones that have been here since the machine came back. And then I just have one more to go and then it's just the current ones that have come in. Um, but I, there was no way I could go and stand on the concrete with the, my knee hurting. So I ended up spending some of the afternoon stitching. So I just had a little bit of this done from last time. So I finished, um, I finished this motif, finished the trees, and then I started working on the house. And I like it. I really, really like this one. I love the colors. I love everything about this. So wonderful. So I am hoping to make a lot of progress and then I'm really hoping to get it done by Christmas. Next up is Turkey Hollow Farms by Stacy Nash. So uh, the other day, Shanda from Stitching in Idaho, she sent me a message on Instagram and she asked me if my turkey, so this turkey right here, she asked if he had feathers. And I was looking at the chart and I thought she meant that his fed, like his wings had specialty stitches or something. And then she sent me a picture of the picture and a picture of the chart. And she said, did your turkey have the tail feathers? So I went to go look at my chart and it does not, but the picture has tail feathers. So I, I sent a message to Yvette because I'm stitching on it with Yvette. And I asked her if her chart had tail feathers and it didn't so she contacted Stacy Nash and Stacy Nash thought that she meant that she was missing part of her chart so then Yvette had to write her back and say no the turkey in the picture has tail feathers but the chart doesn't so Stacy Nash was supposed to go and look in her um, in her files to see you know what had happened to the tail feathers I haven't heard anything yet but I think that um, her and I are just going to kind of fill in the, the boxes and fill in the turkey feathers and then stitch the turkey feathers as it is shown in the picture. So if you're stitching this, you might want to look, does your chart have tail feathers on the turkey? So that being said, here is my progress. So I've been working on this on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I was able to finish the house. I also finished the fence. I got started on the turkey and I also did one of the corn stalks and I also finished Turkey Hollow, the words Turkey Hollow. Um, I am not going to do the sign. I just decided to stitch Turkey Hollow up above the barn or the house, barn house. Um, I just think it gives it a little more of a primish vibe and I really like it. It turned out, it's turning out really, really well. All right, so there was a little bit of a pause. Uh, the husband had come back from the grocery store, so we had to unload all of that, and then I had to feed the men. Um, and I was talking about this. So I know that I did not mention what I was stitching it on, which is a piece of a 36 count antique white. I am stitching it with all of the called for threads, one over two. I'm stitching this with Christy Crosshatch Quilts and Yvette. And this has been our autumn stitch and I am loving it. It's really hard to put this one down after the two days because it would be so easy to just keep going. Um, I've almost got that one turkey over there. He's about halfway stitched and then I will be adding a tail. <laughs> and if, you know, Shanda hadn't said something, I never would have noticed. It would probably have been who knows how long before, you know, somebody might have said something or before I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like the picture. Um, so I'm glad that she did, and so now I will be adding the tail feathers. But I love this. It's so much fun. When I get done, I am planning on using the walnut crystals to dye it. I do have a lot to learn because I did mix up the um, 
the crystal dye solution to dye something I'm going to show you here shortly. And I ended up having to rinse the piece out a little bit because it it was a lot. <laughs> so I have I have to like play with it, dilute it a little bit more and, and play with it a little bit more before I attempt to dye that piece. Next up is Our Lasting Friendship by Blackbird Designs. I'm stitching this with Carol, Yvette, and Lauren. Lauren finished hers today. Um, they're all farther ahead of, of me. Um, they're, they're, they're almost done. I mean, Lauren finished, Yvette's almost done, and I think Carol is too. I think I'm going to be the last person working on this. <laughs> Uh, but here is my progress. So my five days, I was a little bit disappointed because three of the five days, I only was able to stitch on it for about 45 minutes. I did rip out that upper border and now I'm actually considering not stitching the border at all um, and keeping it a little bit more open. I don't know, I keep going back and forth. I wished I had gotten a little bit farther ahead but maybe the next time I will. Um, but I love it, it's a beautiful piece. I love the colors, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm stitching it on a piece of a 36 count Legacy with the called for threads, one over two. So beautiful, 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 and I'm super jealous that they're all almost done. But I'm glad they're having a good time doing it. Lawrence is gorgeous and um, I'm hoping at some point to have it finished. <laughs> Next up is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. So I had this one in my last video. I had worked on it one evening. And then of course I had four more days after that. And this is how far I got. So I was able to finish the lawn, um, start on the tree. I began, I also began kind of filling in the dog. And then I think in my last video, my squirrel was headless. So it's, it doesn't look like there's a ton of stitching, but there is. I mean, the, that lawn area, hill area, it took, it took a lot of stitches, but it's beautiful. I love it. So the next time it rolls around again in my rotation, I will work on the apple tree and see how much farther I can get next time. Um, I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha with the called for DMC one over two. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And because everybody is getting out all of their autumn pieces, a lot of them have autumn at Hawkrun Hollow already on their wall. So that's a lot of motivation for me to get it done. And maybe if I'm really lucky next autumn, it'll be on my wall too. So fingers crossed. All right, so let's talk about finishes. Um, I have two recent finishes I'm gonna show you, and then I have three previous finishes. Um, the first thing is Pineberry Lane's Home Sweet Home. Uh, the last time I showed it, I think all I needed to do was fill in the initials, which I then did a few days ago. Um, I kinda, I don't know why I was dragging my feet on finishing it. It, it had like an hour left of work left on it, I think some of it had to do with when I, when I got it to the point where I showed it in my last video, I took it and I measured it for the frame that I already had for it, discovered that the frame I had was not going to work and I was going to have to either buy a custom frame or get lucky at the Goodwill. I got lucky at the Goodwill and I was able to find a frame for it. But I was really disappointed. I know I did my calculations right because I have an app that will, you know, you plug in the stitch, you know, the, the width and the height of the stitch count and then it'll tell you how big your stitch piece will be when you're done. And it was supposed to fit into a five by seven and it was about a half of an inch uh, too big on the sides and the, the height and the width. Um, so I was really, I was really disappointed and I think that's kind of what stalled, you know, you know, putting in the, the two initials and being done with it. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're working on stuff, just, I feel like the weirdest things will just sort of derail you. And then you just finally have to say, I need to finish this. So 
here's my finish. Uh, so I stitched it on a piece of 36 count antique white with the called for DMC one over two. I have made a mistake. Um, if you look at these two, they don't look exactly the same. This one's correct and this one has a branch that kind of shoots out weird. I decided to leave it um, because I'm not perfect and I'm just gonna, I was just gonna leave it as a reminder to myself that I'm not perfect. <laughs> um, and then uh, after I finished the two initials, um, I measured it, I went to the Goodwill and I found a frame. This frame was one that had, it had like a Winnie the Pooh picture in it. So it looked like it might've been like a, a pre-made, uh, for like a, a frame for a nursery, one that you would have like bought at like a big box store. Um, so I popped that out, took out all of the staples, I sanded it, and I discovered that I was out of black paint um, because I did want it to have like a, like a, I like when it's just kind of like a, a plain black, um, kind of gives it that prim look that I like. Um, so I had to mix a bunch of colors together to get the black color that I needed because I was just determined that I needed to get this piece finished. Um, and then after the paint dried, I sanded it again. And then I took my piece, I, <laughs> I mixed up the walnut crystal dye and right over here, I applied it and I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Like I can use the primitive antiquing spray, no problem but the, the walnut dye, I didn't realize that it was really gonna dye the fabric and it turned it sort of like that, uh, you know, Weeks Dye Works cocoa, that's what it looked like. So I had to rinse it out in the sink, um, dab it a little bit to get sort of that rusty crusty look and then I washed it again and then um, I, I uh, used my iron to dry it. So it looks really, really good, but I do have a lot to learn when it comes to dyeing with the walnut crystals. So my piece is, I cut a piece of mat board, the size that I needed for the frame. Um, I used three pieces of warm and natural batting. I laced it onto it and here you go. And it hangs in the kitchen. I have a corner cabinet and it hangs underneath a, I have like a prim, there's like a little prim candle sconce and then this hangs right below it. So it was a lot of fun. I'm glad to have it done. I stitched it for my four times great grandmother, Mary Jane Wilson, who was born in 1849 in South Carolina. My next finish is Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Design. So I stitched this, I started stitching it last year. It was part of a stitch along hosted by Lori Holt and Christy Crossat Quilts. Um, I think I set it aside briefly and then I started working on it again earlier this year and I think I finished it late spring. I had to order a custom frame for it from the Rusty Roof. Um, I believe this frame is called Cimarron and it is in the ebony stain. And I got mine without glass. Um, so I stitched a uh, piece of friendship on a piece of 36 count Heartland with various, some of the called for, some that I substituted mainly in the house, uh, one over two. I think it turned out really, really good. I also uh, took a piece of mat board. I cut it to the size of the frame. Um, I used three pieces of batting and I laced it. I love it. I'm so happy that this is done. It kind of turned out a little bit bigger than I um, I thought. I I don't know. You know how sometimes you're working on something and you think it's a lot smaller than it is. Uh, but I love it. I'm I just I absolutely love this. It was such a joy to stitch, um, and I'm so happy to have it out this year. I'm hoping that next year I'm just gonna have an awesome autumn display of stitches. I see it all the time on Instagram and Facebook, and I really hope that. Maybe next year, you know, with having Feast of Friendship done, Gordon Squash Bottom, and then um, Turkey Hollow, and some of the other um, autumn stitches that we're going to be doing over this next coming year. I'm hoping that I'll be able to have just the coolest autumn display of finished cross stitch. I think it's going to be so fun. 
And then another new finish is this one is called Smell My Feet by La Di Da. Um, it is a chart that came out of the 2008 Just Cross Stitching Halloween edition. I had a lot of you guys contact me wanting to know if you could have my chart and unfortunately no um, because I did borrow it. Uh, but occasionally on eBay, I do see the 2008 issue come up for sale. So I would recommend maybe going to eBay and searching that way. Um, I think there is also a companion piece that came out and you might be able to get that one. I think it's a really long shoe. I think I thought somebody uh, said it was a companion. Anyway, um, I stitched this on a piece of 36 count Havana by Weeks and I used um, DMC 310 for the black and the green of her legs is Classic Colorworks Frog, Lake, Frog Legs. Um, I did stitch it one over two and then I just finished it into this little pillow for the trench bowl. Um, I added a little safety pin and I just tied a piece of the leftover fabric that I used for the back onto the front. Super, super cute. The only thing I left off is the spider because I don't like them. <laughs> so such a, a, such a cute finish. I really had fun stitching that. I was working on it with um, Yvette and Carol and Lauren and it was just so much fun to work on it with them. All right, let's talk about previous finishes. So I pulled three of my previous finishes um, and then in my next video, I will show the rest of them. If I wouldn't have had the three new finishes, I would have um, pulled some more. So in my next video, I'll definitely have a lot more to show as well. So this one is uh, Where the Bittersweet Blooms. It is by Brenda Gervais. Um, I stitched this one last year, I think. It was either last year, I think it was last year. Um, this chart is still available. I purchased mine from uh, Brenda Gervais' uh, shop. It's called Country Stitches Online. I know right now her shop is closed. Mm -hmm. But it, when she gets back, I, I can't remember if it said she was vacationing or if she, um, what it was that she was doing. But when it reopens, I know that this chart is still available on her website. I was trying to remember what it is that I stitched this on. And I think it was a piece of 32 count linen that I tea coffee dyed. And I did stitch it with the called for threads, I believe. And then I fully finished it on a chalkboard that I found at Michael's. I painted it, grunged it up, and then just used some um, flowers that, some fall foliage that I had, that I already had. And I believe I stitched this two over two. So I love it. It's such a fun, cute little finish. Very nice. And then my next one is this one. So this one was the Jardin Privé chart that I was talking about earlier. I cannot remember what the name of it is. I think it's just Halloween. Um, and then of course this is a skeleton that reminds me of Burt Reynolds. So when I think of this, I think of my, you know, I just call it my Burt piece. Um, I stitched it on a piece of 32 count. It is a 32 count, but I can't tell. I don't I don't know if it's vintage country mocha or if it's a piece of linen that I tea coffee dyed. Um, but I did use the called for DMC and I stitched it two over two. And then this board here I found also at Michael's. It already comes with a little bur um, jute, a little jute hanger. I used some more of the fall foliage that I have and I did paint it kind of rusty crusty. Um, this one, it looks like I, I remember lacing it. I can feel that there is batting underneath it and I did use a piece of mat board for both pieces. But it's, a, it's a really fun finish. So this one hangs and I, I hopefully, I'll have pictures and started. I don't know if it's gonna be at the beginning or if it's gonna be at the end, but it hangs at the top of one of my quilt ladders. 
All right, and my last one is this one. So this, I believe, is October 31st by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. And I'll double check, and if I'm wrong, I'll scroll it down below because I think she has another piece that could also be called October 31st. But this one was modified uh, because I did make a ton of mistakes in it. I made mistakes in her. I made mistakes in the trees. And by the time I got one, I think at this tree stitched, I just did not want to stitch that big chunk of grass. It says October 31st in it. I think I was just getting really tired of it. I was just very frustrated with it and I just wanted it to be done. Um, so the finishing inspiration came from Priscilla. Um, she does or did have something hanging up in her house that was very similar. I got the sign from Michael's what I think it was the year before I finished this one. Um, I don't believe that you can still get it. I haven't, I've seen variations of it, but this particular one I haven't seen since I bought it that year. I stitched it on a piece of 32 count linen. It could possibly be vintage country mocha, but it also looks like it might have been something I tea coffee dyed. I stitched it with various floss because I don't think that I used the called for. I might have used some of the called for. And I stitched it two over two. Um, so it is attached with, there's like four pieces of mat board here. I had Brian drill some holes in this and in this. And I really like how it turned out. Thank you so much to Priscilla for the finishing inspiration on this. And I do like getting it out every single year. Um, it hangs out in the dining room. And then I have a little, when Allison was in high school, I think she was a sophomore or junior, um, her and Ethan both dressed up in their Halloween costumes to go to school that day. And I made them both boutonnieres for their, the collars of their outfits. And I have one of those that I use. I just stick it. I hang this on a nail and then I stick it on the nail. So it's it's a skeleton with some flowers and it's a lot of fun. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean up all of this mess and then we're gonna talk some giveaways. So in my last video, I did have a giveaway and thank you so much to everybody who entered to win the giveaway. I really loved reading about where you guys are all from, what your towns are. Um, some of you guys had some really cool stories about your town. And it was just, it was really, really neat. And I'm glad that you guys get into the spirit of answering the questions because I know that some of them can be a little off the wall. But, you know, okay, you know, sometimes I just, I'm curious, like, where are you guys all from? So I really enjoyed reading about that. I have so many friends that are just scattered across the globe. And I just, I really love knowing that. So that being said, um, the first, so I had two giveaways. Well, basically I had three giveaways, but one of them was the same thing. And so the winners of those, and it was for these floss drops by Lori Holt. It's the um, flower floss flower thread bobbins. So I had two of these to give away and the winners are Amy Berry and Kathy Wells. So thank you so much, you guys. Um, I, of course, will comment on your comment, and then you just need to email me with your mailing address, and I will get those out in the mail to you soon. And then I had this. So this is a B, a scissor B, no, a wooden scissor B scup. And it was so generously sent to me from Kathy and Peter Firth. Kathy's husband, Peter, makes these beautiful wooden bee scups and she they both so very generously sent me one to give away in my video and the winner is kim the stay-at-home quilter so congratulations kim if you can get a hold of me the same way shoot me an email um, and send me your address i will get it out in the mail to you really soon congratulations to all the winners if i didn't mention it before i of course will comment on your comment and thank you so much for playing so this video also has a giveaway um, and I'm trying to think of a really good question and I think that the one that just keeps popping up in my mind is so if you're like me a lot of the times when you're watching floss tube you're working on stuff so I usually will be stitching or I will be making quilts or even hooking up a quilt to the quilt machine 
Um, so I always kind of have it on it while I'm doing different things. And so I'm curious when you are, well, right now you're watching my video. So what is it you're working on while you're watching my video? Now, the prizes. The first prize, and the way that I'm going to do this, of course, will be each giveaway is assigned a number. And then you just need to let me know down below which numbers you're interested in winning because that is how I do search. So you would just say, I'm working on Halloween ABC by Jardin Privé and I would like, and then you just list the numbers. Um, so the first giveaway and number one is uh, Pansy Patch Quilts, uh, Peace Winter at Pansy Patch Manor. So this is number one. Number two is Homegrown. Number three will be the Stitch Cards by Lori Holt. Uh, number four is the Quilt Blue Smoke. Yes, yes, Blue Smoke. <laughs> Do you ever get like that when you're doing something and you, you read it off and you're just, the name doesn't look right, but it is. <laughs> And then number five is Quilty Barn. So if you are interested in any of those, you just need to make sure down below um, you answer the question, I am working on, and then the numbers that you are interested in winning. And then in my next video, I will announce those giveaway winners. And thank you so much for playing. And also thank you so much to the Fat Quarter Shop and Patty for sending those charts to me so that I could give away to all of you. All right, guys, so that brings me to the end of the cross-stitching portion of the video. I am going to talk and show quilts next. So if that's not something you're interested in seeing, this is a great stopping off point. And of course, I'll be back in two weeks with a brand new update. Um, and as always, if you um, are interested in seeing what I'm up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram, I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. And on Facebook, I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. So. That being said, have a great two weeks, and now I'm gonna talk about the quilts. All right, let's talk about quilts. So over the past two weeks, I was sent some Quilty Happy Mail, and it was so, it's just so very generous of you guys. I wish there were words to adequately, adequately describe my thankfulness. Um, you guys are just absolutely the best. You spoil me rotten, and I really do hope at some point I am able to pay it forward. Um, I was contacted by Cheryl, and she sent me this beautiful card. And she had some Civil War scraps in her stash that she was no longer using. Uh, when she got into cross-stitching, she collected Civil War fabrics, but then discovered that her heart really was elsewhere. So she had these scraps sitting in her stash and she thought that I might be able to make use of them. So I'm just gonna show the bag because the, it's just chocked full of all sorts of delicious reproduction fabrics. I actually have used some of these in my Farmer's Wife quilt because I had to make 10 blocks. So I was able to already put some of these fabrics to good use. They're all beautiful. And I, scrappy quilts are my favorite. So I, I'm definitely gonna put all of those scraps to good use because I'm planning on making the Dear Jane quilt. Um, at the, I think we're gonna start at the beginning of the year, I think. The book is getting revamped. Um, if you know what the Dear Jane quilt is, it's just that fabulous quilt. Um, I'll ha I have the book somewhere, the book's put away. I should have brought it in since I mentioned it, but they're revamping it and they're gonna re, all the patterns got rewritten. So um, my friends and I were going to attempt the Dear Jane quilt. So all of these scraps definitely will be put to use in that quilt. So thank you so very much, Cheryl. And then Pat contacted me and said that she also had some scraps that she wanted to send my way. She also included this. This is the Quilters a Project Planner. And I think this will come in handy because a lot of the quilts that I did prior to Floss Tube, before I thought anybody would be interested in hearing or seeing about them, a lot of the names I have forgotten. I've forgotten a lot of the information about them, where I got them from, was it a kit, was it not? Some of the stuff I can remember, but a lot of it I can't. And so I feel like this book is really gonna come in handy for me because I also have 
the needleworker's notebook, which I keep track of what I'm working on. So I think it's gonna come in really handy. And then she sent me a bunch of Civil War scraps. So again, it's all, it's gonna be perfect for the Dear Jane quilt. It's so beautiful. I love all of the scraps. So beautiful and so very generous. And then she also included some extra fat quarters. So just so very generous. Thank you so very much. I've been enjoying petting them. I've been enjoying going through the scraps. I just, I absolutely am humbled by you guys. You're so very sweet and kind and wonderful and so very generous. So thank you so much. And then yesterday, uh, Veronica, I had just finished a quilt for Veronica and sent it back. And then she sent me um, some books. So she sent me this magazine quilt sampler and I I was flipping through here and there's a shop in Texas and my friend is going to Texas and they look like they had a bunch of reproduction fabric in it. And I guess it's, um, my friend's gonna go to the International Quilt Festival or Market. I think it's in Houston, Houston or Austin. I wanna say Houston, um, but her and her mom are going to go and I guess this shop is like kind of on their way. So she's gonna stop the shop is called B&B uh, &B Quilting, I think, and it's in Buda, Texas. And so my friend, they're gonna try to stop. And I noticed that she had a lot of older reproduction fabrics. Yeah, it's B&B &B Quilting in Buda, Texas. And so they're gonna stop, well, if she can, if she can't, it's okay. But she, her and her mom are gonna stop. And I sent her a picture of this one fabric that I'm trying to find. <laughs> And then she also sent me Joe's Little Favorites 3. And I love this one. I do not have it. I'm a huge Joe Morton fan. So I definitely have, you know, because I usually, when I buy um, quilt books, I try to uh, find them like on thrift books or I try to find them used. Um, so I've had this one on my wish list for a while. And I was so excited when, when it arrived. She sent it to me. It's so very generous and thoughtful and I've been flipping through this book and there's just so many quilts in here that I wanna make. I just, I love all of them. I mean, Joe Morton is like, she is just the best. I mean, I everything that she creates, all of her fabric lines are just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Veronica. And I'm really glad that you like your quilt. I saw your email this morning and I didn't get a chance to email you back before I started my video, but I'm very happy that you love your quilt. Okay, so I went and pulled four of my Halloween quilts and I have those to show you. Uh, the only problem is, is one of them, I do not remember the name or any of the information about it uh, because I finished it quite a while ago. Um, I was hoping that when I looked at it, I would like, there would be some sort of recognition and I would remember what the pattern was that I, that I used or the pattern name of the panel, but I just, I cannot remember. <laughs> So, I also have my Farmer's Wife quilt done. Um, I absolutely love it, and I finished it uh, last, the end of last week. Uh, but before I show that, I need to talk about my Hocus Pocus fill. I've had a lot of questions about it. Um, the first question I got was, can you just get the, um, the houses without getting the, this, um, the pattern for this and no it all comes together um you have to i mean you can just disregard the instructions for the quilt making um but it all comes together or at least mine did um the other question i got was what thread did i use i did use uh, dmc 310 um the quilt itself took me six to eight months to make I do not remember the year that I finished it in, but um, it did go to the state fair and it did win best of show. It also won people's choice. It also went to a quilt show and it got a people's choice ribbon. Um, it went to my county fair and also got a blue ribbon as well. Um, a few of you guys recognized it because you live here in Oregon and you went to the state fair and saw it hanging there. Um, it, I, 
don't remember. So when I was collecting the quilts for it or the fabrics for it, I did search for Civil War reproduction. However, there are some fabrics in here that are not reproduction, but they look kind of like vintage, vintagey. So I did incorporate those into the quilt as well. Um, it's just uh, basically I it had to be that perfect orange and black combination with a little bit. I mean, I do have some lighter um, uh, neutrals and then I all the way to like almost a tan. So I just kind of, I just had fun with it and I enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I did work on it in the evenings after my kids went to bed. Um, so it wasn't like I sat down and just worked on it every day, all day. I only worked on it like I do my cross stitch for an hour or two a day. But I love it. It was a lot of fun. And thank you so much for all of your wonderful comments. Um, if it does go missing, there's a couple of people that I, I do know to, to chase down. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for your kind comments. Okay. Now, Farmer's Wife Quilt. I realize I left the book out in the dungeon, but that's okay. Um, this, so I can only take credit for 10 of the blocks. All of the other blocks were put together by my friend. And um, so basically all I did was I made the 10 blocks, assembled everything together. Um, so I can only take credit for like 10% of it, but it's beautiful. It turned out way bigger than I thought. And there's probably no easy way to do this, so I apologize. Eventually, and it turned out, I mean, it's way longer than I originally thought, and I was thinking I might not be able to hang it here in the winter, but I think if I pin up the bottom, it'll be okay, because I realize I have a couple of quilts that are quite a bit longer, so I think it'll be okay. So let me get it situated here, and I think this is the top. So there's no easy way and I will put a picture of it um, at the end, but here it is. So it is quite the beast. Turned out way bigger than I thought and I'm just going to turn it on its side here. So here's the side. And I just love, love. So this would be the bottom corner here. And let me turn it on the other side. There is that. And that's the bottom corner. So it is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And I honestly will love it forever. It's probably one of the ones that I'm gonna jokingly say I'll be married with it. <laughs> So, and I apologize, you're gonna hear Freddy growling. I don't know what he hears or sees. Um, I don't know, I swear it's probably ghosts. So, but thank you so much for all of your kind comments. Um, I absolutely love that quilt. And again, I can only take credit for 10% of it. The rest of it was all of the blocks were assembled by my friend. It's so beautiful. I cannot wait to get it quilted. Um, she sent some extra blocks with it that are um, barn blocks are a little bit bigger and I'm going to try to Frankenstein the backing, which means I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff together until I get the size that I need. Um, and the hope is that in the winter it'll hang here because I don't really have anything. Hello guys. So this part of the video had a little bit of a technical glitch. Uh, what happened was is my phone, I got a phone call and I have the Google Assistant and it was a spam caller. So the phone call comes in and then the Google Assistant takes care of it. But doing that and recording a video was a little bit too much for my phone to handle. So although it kept recording, it, the audio ended up going completely out. And then at some point it comes back on and I sound like a robot. So instead of deleting this part of the video, I decided I would try to narrate over the top of it. Um, so this particular quilt that I am holding up is called the Pumpkin Seed Quilt. It is by the Pattern Basket, and you can get it as a PDF download, and I will make sure to link it down below. Uh, the one thing that you will notice is that the binding is only sewn on but not completed. I've been meaning for many years to fully stitch it down, but just have not done it yet. 
the quilting that I did on it was kind of a like a curly Q loops and the blocks themselves were it was part of an Instagram block swap that I did the block that I'm showing you right now is the one that I contributed to the block swap and it was a lot of fun I wish I could remember how many years ago I did it I want to say it was like at least four maybe five years ago the background of the quilt is one of the Kona, um, like in charcoal or gray, uh, one of the Kona solids. Um, and everybody, everybody had to get the same background fabric because in order to complete your pumpkin block, you needed a piece of that um, charcoal gray color. Um, but it was a lot of fun to swap with everyone. And it's one of my most favorite Halloween quilts. Um, I do use it for Thanksgiving as well, simply because it's not, it doesn't scream Thanksgiving, so I am able to use it a little bit longer. Um, this next quilt is called uh, the Salem, I always get this one wrong, it's the, um, the Witches of the Salem Quilt Guild. And it is also done by Crab Apple Hill Studio. Uh, the blocks are traced, just like Hocus Pocusville. They're traced, and then you go in and you color them with color crayons. Um, the, the formula for coloring each of the witches and you know the different elements of the quilt, um, she does uh, give you the directions on how you shade it, how you, you know, how you do it. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, um, but it was so worth it. It's, it was such a fun quilt. It comes in three panels, and then the final um, pattern is the assembly. And this quilt here, I um, stitched it up in about five months. I wanted to put it into the state fair. And I worked on it all the way up until the night before. And then in the morning, because I had quilted it the day before it was supposed to go, and then in the morning, I put on the binding and took it to the state fair that afternoon. Uh, I, so this quilt here, so I had come back, so I had found the world of cross-stitching again. And I had, I had been working on this one. I had been working on the top panel. And uh, so um, I had started working on it, and then I found the world of cross-stitching, so I was working on this part right here, found the world of cross-stitching, and then ended up kind of abandoning this for a little while, and then I decided that I wanted to put this in the state fair, so I worked on it over five months to try to get it done, and I put the last stitch in a few days before it was supposed to go off to the state fair and then I had to make all of the patchwork blocks so I basically for two days I did nothing but cut and sew and make all of the blocks and then of course I had to quilt it and bind it and I finished the binding the morning it was supposed to go to be dropped off for the state fair <laughs> because that's the way I roll so it was a lot of fun. Some of the embroidery, you know, there's embroidery here. Um, I think this was supposed to be a button. I chose to do a, um, what are those called? I can't think what those, yo-yos. And inside the yo-yo I did a candy corn. I did it in a couple of different places. I did it down here at the bottom as well. I can't remember what you were supposed to do, but I don't think, um, it was supposed to be something else you were supposed to do, and I just don't remember, but I love it. It's a beautiful quilt, and uh, it was a lot of fun to make. I quilted sort of swirling clouds, but it was a lot of fun. So I think on that particular quilt, um, so Crayola discontinued some of the crayons that the designer had listed for the coloring. And I think she changed everything over to the Prisma colors. I don't know if that one has been, but when I got it, it still had the directions for the 
um, the Crayola crayons, but I think that was one of the last ones and then all of the newer ones have, have the Prisma colors that you're supposed to use. And I think you still do the same technique where you draw it out, you color it, and then you heat set it. Um, I could technically wash this if I wanted to, but I hope I never have to. <laughs> all right, so this one here, this was a panel uh, that a friend of mine gave me. Let me see. Um, and I don't remember the name. And it bugs me because I used to know it for a long time. And every time I would look at it and somebody would ask me what it was, I could tell you what the name of it is. But in the last couple of years, I have completely forgotten what his name was. Um, I, the, so if you, I remember I looked up how to, you know, what to do with this, you know, to turn them into a quilt. There was a quilt that was um, like a freebie that was released. I want to say Riley Blake uh, might have been the um, fabric manufacturer of the panel. And there was a quilt that you could make with it. But then I found this one on Pinterest that um, somebody had made and then she had the directions and then that's what I used. So here it is. So a lot of fun. I, I'm just like kicking myself because I cannot remember what it is that I can't remember. I want to say it's like Mr. Skellington, but that's not right because that's the Disney character, Jack Skellington. I just cannot, I cannot. There was a girl or a lady skeleton that came out. I think she had some, like a big foofy hat. Um, I know since then there have been other, like the next generation of them had come out. And I just can't remember. I don't know if the designer that did this one also did um, the costume maker's ball. I just don't remember. And I thought maybe as soon as I like showed it, it would just click what it was, but nope. So if somebody knows, just let me know down below. <laughs> it's, been many, it's been several years since it came out because I think my friend gave it to me and it, the panel had already been out a couple of years since then. So my last quilt is this one. So this was a quilt along on Instagram that I did. And I do have the pattern because you had to have the book to have the pattern. I used the fabrics out of, it's a fig tree line. I want to say it was farmhouse, um, but I love it. Such a fun quilt. I usually leave this one out during Thanksgiving as well. So I had to pause really quick because the book that I had brought in, the one that I thought had the quilt inside of it, turns out it wasn't. Um, and so I had to run out and grab it and it is Winter Wonderland. And this is by Sherry Falls of This and That Pattern Company. So this book here, I've made quite a few quilts out of it. I've made the, the Christmas quilts out of it. But I remember when um, right before she was going to release this one. She did a quilt along and she changed a couple of things. You still needed the book to make the quilt, but she, she made a few changes and I can't remember what they are, but this is the quilt. So it was a lot of fun to make. So as far as the, all of the quilts, that's all I have to share in this video. And then of course, next time I will pull the rest of my Halloween quilts and I will show those. Um, but I figured it would be way easier just to show you them in the video than to try to do a home tour um, because a lot of times you just are panning and talking really fast. And I remember getting a lot of questions about all of the different quilts, so I thought it would be way easier if I just showed you the quilts. So going forward, uh, quilting-wise for the week, um, my other friend sent me this quilt right here. Um, she pretty much had made... 92% of the quilt and they're just there was like a handful of these blocks left to make and then there was um, there's all of these outside ones and I have all of them done but I'm one short so I have to make the one that I'm missing and then I will be able to assemble it so hopefully I will have that to show you in my next video. 
So as far as everything goes, that brings me to the end of the video. If you've stuck around for this length of time, thank you so much. I know I had several large pauses in there. It is now well after lunchtime, so I'm gonna go get something to eat. And then I'm gonna hope that these videos upload before I have to leave. <laughs> because otherwise I'll have to leave my phone behind. And then of course, you know, something's gonna happen. And yeah, anyway, so if you have stuck around for this long, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it so, so much. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys continue to give to me. Um, I appreciate you guys who come back and you watch every single video and you let me know. Um, I just really appreciate it so much. I appreciate you all. And so thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a great two weeks. If you have any questions, you know, please feel free to, you know, let me know and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Um, otherwise, all of the information of everything that I've shown will be listed in the description box. And if you have any questions about those, you know, please feel free to let me know. Otherwise, have a great two weeks and I will see you all again soon. Bye.